All right, so now it's time to move on to cycle 12, which is mixing gameplay audio. We saved, uh, I don't wanna say the best for last, but maybe it's the best for last. Who knows? Uh, so I often have a joke that there is the trinity of game development. That trinity of game development is a programming, design, and art, and audio. Uh, and so during the actual uh, training day, we had this part presented by Michael Warburton. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Michael Warburton couldn't be with me uh, here today in my office uh, to record this, but uh, he says hi. And uh, so, yeah, so I'm going to cover this part on audio. And so what we're going to do here is we want to add all of the the ambient sounds, all of the, you know, sound effects, music, all of these things to our game. And, you know, this audio really adds a lot to the experience of the game. And, you know, what we really want to do is we want to take it a step further from simply like, let's play a sound or, you know, play, uh, you know, this thing happens, so make the sound effect as sort of a one-off thing. Instead, we want to add some sort of depth. We want to add a lot of sort of channels and planning to the way we're handling handling audio in this particular game, which is actually cool because it's it's a more involved way of handling audio than we've done in previous training days. Uh, and so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to go to my audio folder and I'm going to see that I have these sort of organization bits. And I have this audio manager, which I'll get to in a second. But we have some uh, ambient sound. We have some effects. We have some movement sounds, some music, and some voices. And these effects are often called stings uh, as an audio term. Uh, and so that's sort of the way we're going to have these organized. Now, I see here in my game view I have audio muted, so I'm going to undo that or else this would be a very sort of odd video to watch without any audio. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and start with this audio manager. And the only reason I have this as a prefab, it's a single game object with a script on it. And that script just has all these audio clips slotted into the appropriate properties. I didn't wanna waste time by saying, okay, now drag windstones on the ambient and drag main music on the music and so on and so forth. So we just created a prefab here that's just gonna have all these things. So. Again, there's nothing complex about this. It just has a script with the audio already on it, so we don't have to do that one by one, uh, which is just kind of a pain in the butt. So let's take a look at what this audio manager script does. It's actually uh, pretty simple. And so basically, again, it's, it's gonna be a manager, just like uh, you know our UI manager and our game manager. So it's, we're gonna set this up with this singleton pattern. And we're gonna have these properties that are gonna hold different sound clips for us. So you can see like level sting clip and walk step clips and jump clip and so on and so forth. Mixer groups we're gonna get to in a moment. And then what's actually gonna happen is instead of the audio manager uh, referencing audio sources on things like our player and you know spikes or doors or whatever, what's actually gonna happen is the audio manager is gonna generate its own audio sources at runtime. Cause you can see there's no audio sources on it right here. And that gives us a kind of a high flex uh, amount of flexibility. So basically we're, it's gonna generate an ambient source, a music source, a sting source, a player source, and a voice source all on itself. And then every other thing in the game can say, hey, audio manager, play this sound sort of in this channel or this group or, or this sort of thing. Uh, and then the audio manager is going to handle that. The idea being here that, you know, when the player needs to make a sound, the, the player itself shouldn't really care what the sound is. Um, it should just let the audio system handle that. Um, so we have one place to sort of assign and hook up all those different audio clips. And that way we're not, you know, searching through all of our, our hierarchy going, what is making that noise? Uh, now it's just all is basically coming from, from one location. And it's a nice, easy way to organize. And so inside Awake, we're going to see that we are going to, you know, do a game object to add component to create and add these ambient sor audio sources. Uh, and then basically we have things like start audio or start audio or level audio. So it's going to set the ambient clip and set it to loop and play. And same for your music sources, uh, play footstep audio. It's going to say basically, all right, uh, if you know we're not currently playing a footstep audio, uh, then grab a random footstep sound and play that sound. Same with the crouching footstep audio and jumping and death audio. But... They're all, I mean, there's a lot of these different types of audio, but basically they're all just the same. Set a clip, play it. Set a clip, play it, right? And so 
Here we might say, all right, let's set the player source to this clip and play it uh, versus set the player source to this clip and play it, right? So we, we only need a few audio sources to cover all of our different audio instead of having hundreds of audio sources, which is inefficient and unnecessary, all right? So these are just some of the different types of audio we'll be playing. And that, again, is going to reference these audio clips up here. All right. And we actually have already sort of been using these calls again. So if I go to my player health and I say, okay, uh, here, right, this is where the player dies. We've been calling all along audio manager dot play death audio. Um, but effectively what's been happening is, and let me just do this here. Let me just go to that. What's effectively been happening is saying, okay, well, you know, if we don't currently have an audio manager, just, just return, don't do anything. And so we haven't been getting an error or anything. It just hasn't been playing any audio. Well, now we have one, and so we'll begin playing that audio. So we've got this audio manager in our scene, all right? And at this point, we'll actually already just be able to hit play. And what we're going to see once we hit play is we have all of these audio sources. We can see some of the clips they're playing and what they're doing. We can hear it. We can hear the music uh, that's going, and we can run around. We can hear some footsteps. And I love the crouching sound. He's got like little squeaky shoes. There you go. Then I collect an orb, and you hear him. You hear both the, the sting, the chime sound, but you also hear his voice. We're doing some layered audio, layering these things on top of each other. The background, we also have both ambient music and the ambient sound. So if I turn off the music, right? And if I turn off the sound. So both work together to give us you know, this sort of feel to our game. And you know, then the level loading different audio, voice, and whatever. And of course, when the door opens, we'd hear that and, and all these other things. So already we have a, a fair bit of depth of audio with just a little bit of code uh, and some audio clips. The challenge we have now is, let's say my background music is too loud or I just want to hear the player's voice a little bit better. I don't really have uh, you know, audio sources that I can easily ma manipulate because any changes I make to the audio sources that are generated on the audio manager will go away at runtime or go away when I leave uh, uh, runtime play mode. I could manually add five audio sources here as, as components. However, I still find that I'd have to tweak you know, all the different settings on these audio sources. When I left play mode, those, those tweaks would be gone. And that doesn't make it easy to set up you know, things like you know, any form of audio effects where things chain together or you know, one audio source affects the other. It's a very limited approach. And luckily, there's a, there's a better way to do this. And that way is audio mixers, right? So. Before I create an audio mixer, I just want to illustrate the point that, you know, basically what I'm saying is if I, if I go to play here and I say, okay, well, you know, my, my background music is too loud, so let's drop that volume down or whatever. When I leave play mode, that change will be gone, as will any of the changes I make anywhere else on here. And that's what I'm trying to correct. And then we can see that we already have these properties for, for mixer groups. So let's go ahead and create a mixer. So I'm going to go up to audio and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say create and I'm going to create an audio mixer, which I'll just call maybe uh, uh, main, my main mixer or whatever. Uh, and so with this main audio mixer, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we, you know, we can see some options there. We don't need to touch any of those. I'm just going to double click this and open this audio mixer window. Now I have two other audio mixers already in this project. I have a reference mixer which is just for our reference completed scenes. So if you ever get lost and think, oh, you know, what should I be looking for? You can come back and check this reference mixer, the main one that we're going to be setting up now, and then this extended one for an extended version of the, uh, of the game, which is here up in my extended folder there. And I'll, I'll show you that at the very end. But again, what I'm messing around with is my main audio uh, uh, mixer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish groups. I'm going to have one group per, you know, quote unquote, audio channel that I'm going to be dealing with uh, besides master. And so I'm going to create five of these, these sort of mixer groups. I'm going to have one for my ambient, one for my music, one for those stings or sound effects, uh, one for my player's audio, like footsteps and jumping and, and oof from dying, whatever, and then uh, uh, one for my player's voice. And so I'm just going to go ahead and select master and click plus. And that's going to give me a new group here. In this one, I'm going to call ambient. 
So if I spell right. Now I don't want to click plus again, because what that's effectively going to do is that's going to create a new one that is a child of, of ambient, not of master. And just to show you, if I do that, there we go, it's a child of ambient. I'm not going to keep this, but I'm going to rename this one music. And I'm just going to just drag it up here to, to make it not a child of ambient. Um, if it was a child of ambient, then the volume I things I set or do to ambient will also affect music because music will be a child of that. So I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to keep these separate. And now I'm just going to add another one. And this one is going to be my sting. And I'll click back on master, add another one. This is going to be player. And then finally, clicking back on master, I'm going to add voice. And there we go. So we have these audio channels here. Now, before doing anything with these, I'm going to click back on my audio manager. And for each of these groups here, I'm just going to click the circle selector and click the correct group. So ambient for ambient and music for music and so on and so forth. Sting for sting. And we're just moving on down the line, player for player and voice for voice. Now, in the code we saw earlier, what is happening behind the scenes is after these audio sources are created, we are then assigning this audio source dot output audio mixer group to the group that we've just provided there in the editor. All right, so these added here will be applied to the audio sources at runtime. And that's what this, this is what it enables us to do. So I'm going to hit play again. Uh, and now, while I'm in play mode here, uh, we can see the groups have been assigned to our audio sources. And I'm going to be able to do something like edit in play mode. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to make a lot of tweaks. So my, maybe my ambient audio from listening is a little too noisy. So maybe we want to drop this down a bit. All right, we're not, oh, not music, whoops, ambient. There we go, maybe just something like that. I don't know. And maybe uh, maybe my stings are a little loud, uh, but maybe, maybe I want to boost my player's voice and reduce my player's audio or whatever. You know what, no, actually I want to go the opposite. I want to go higher with the player's audio. Make footsteps more pronounced. There you go. And so we boosted his audio and his voice and you know, so there we go. Maybe I just want to drop down music and ambient and keep these, whatever. I'm free to just basically play around, knowing that when I leave play mode, those settings will be saved. Now I've obviously done different than from my, my reference or whatever, but you know, it's just kind of up to you. We also have the ability to do things like add all these different effects and we can do send and receive to link channels together. We could, take basically one audio mixer and route its master channel into the group of another audio mixer so we could link them and nest them and do all sorts of cool stuff and flange and echo and whatever we want to do, right? So maybe we do echo on ambient to make it sound more cavernous so or whatever. But these audio mixers give us a lot of power and a lot of control over how we want that to operate. Okay, so now that I have completed adding the audio there, which is actually a very, very simple step, now it's time for you to do the same. And so here's what you're going to do. So first off, you're going to drag the audio manager prefab, which is in the audio folder, into your scene. In the project view, you're going to right click in the audio folder and select create audio mixer. You can name that audio mixer whatever you want. Then you're going to double click on the newly created audio mixer to open up the audio mixer window, which is where we did all the edits to our audio mixer. In the groups section, you're going to add five new groups using the uh, the plus icon there. Make sure that uh, you've selected master each time you hit plus, so you're creating uh, basically children of master and not children of children of children, and so on and so forth. Then you're going to rename those groups ambient, music, sting, player, and voice, or, you know, whatever you want, but uh, that's what's going to match the naming pattern uh, on the, the audio manager script. And then you're going to apply the groups to the named properties on the audio manager, and then uh, you can save your scene, hit play, and you can edit in play mode to you know change your audio up and down or add effects or screw around or do whatever you want to do with that. And then once you're done with that, it will be time to move on to cycle 13.